Hi guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So, uh, missed a video last week but uh, we're back now so never mind, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's get on with this mini lathe and we're going to be sorting out a few bits and bobs with the bed and perhaps adding the fourth bolt to uh, bolt the head to it and a few other uh, things if I can fit them in. So, enjoy guys. As you can see, I got the bed of the mill here, or the bed of the lathe, I should say, on the mill. Um, and I've got it sat on one, two, three blocks. I will break, not one, two, three, it's two, four, six blocks. When I put the bed of the lathe the right way up on the bed of the mill, it was rocking something dreadful. And yet, when I put the bed, the flat part, the top, or what should be flat, or hopefully flat, when I put that on top of the, uh, for one of the better word, we'll call them parallels, it sits nicely, doesn't rock at all. So it suggests to me that the feet on the underside of this bed are not in a true plane to each other. So, basically I've taken a 0.1 cut off first, it didn't clean up. This is another 0.1 cut, so I'm hoping this will clean up after this cut. Um, it has actually cleaned up the area that wasn't cleaned up. So, 0.2 mil I've taken off the bottom of this pad. So I'm going to have to slide it along the bed uh, of the mill to give me enough travel and do the other end to exactly the same depth. I'll zoom out and show you the setup in a minute. It's uh, it's not perfect, but it does the job. And I'm not hogging material out. So I'll just finish this off and bring you back. Just to show you the setup, uh, there's the big 246 blocks underneath on the flat part of the bed. They're not riding on the um, on the triangulated part, obviously. Uh, clamped down solidly that end. Again, there's the other block, and we're clamped down on top of that one solidly as well. But, yeah, I'm overhanging the end of my mill table by, you know, 100 mil that end. And we're in board on that end, but that's fine. So, spun round the other way. Clamped in exactly the same on top of the blocks. And this should be just about the last cut. I've gone to exactly the same depth with the quill. Everything locked. So I'm hoping that when I break this down, clean it all up, I'll take the edges off, the sharp edges. Or not that they're that sharp, but I'll uh, just shamper the corners a bit. And I'm hoping that when I've cleaned all the table down and what have you, that it sits nice and flat on the table and doesn't rock. Because if I'm going to be clamping this to something flat and the bottom is out in relation to the top, I'm going to be clamping it out of shape. So hence why this little exercise. Um, the only thing I want to do at this point is going back to the head that we've been working on is I do want to drill that fourth hole to hold the headstock down. Uh, there's only three bolts as we saw when I stripped it. And I would like there to be four bolts. So putting the fourth bolt in, um, in the bed and the headstocks turned out to be a bit of a, bit of a pain. Uh, the standard centres of the holes are 85mm. Um, which I get away with in the head, no problem, without breaking through the wall or anything. But if I try 85mm here, uh, you know, to keep the pattern in a square, my bolt, which is one of these bolts, the cap-headed Allen bolts, which come in from underneath, uh, my bolt is going to be fouling on the rib on the underside. Um, so I'm going to have to drop it back a little bit. And the minimum I can see here that I can drop it back is to about, well, maybe 83 mil. 83 would be about it. And that would stop my thread breaking out the side of the casting. So I'm going to go with 83 which 
yeah, it's going to, I'm going to get the flat surface. I might have to do a bit of fettling on the underside. Uh, might have to flick the bed over and maybe do a little bit of milling in there to be able to get the bolt head in. So if I'm going to have to do that anyway, I am very close here. I'm going to go to 84 mil. So I'm going to drill a hole down through here or probably run a milling cutter down through, make a small drill and then run a milling cutter down through. I don't think it's uh, too hard. In fact, let me just find a little needle file and see what the hardness is in this. Uh... Yeah, we should be fine for drilling that. So a hole, um, instead of 85 centers, I'm going to go 84 and I've written 84 on there already. So we'll set this up nice and square. And basically get the hole drilled then we'll do the same thing in the in the head come 84 across from that hole to here and Bob's your uncle they should have four bolts and we may have to do a bit of fettling on the underside as I said earlier I've had to put my center drill up in the collet because I haven't quite got the head height up here to get the chuck in so um, yeah, I'm just going to put a series of drills in the collet and uh, drill it out and then we'll have a look at the condition with the head of the bolt. Oh, I'll have to just bring the head down a touch. Okay. So, uh, that's an 8mm hole. Um, looking at the other holes, I mean, an 8.5 fly through them. Um, so it appears, let's just put a 9 in. It appears to be a 9 mil drill. So I'm going to do the same, give myself a bit of leeway in case the holes are out of line somewhere. I don't want the bolts biasing the position of the head down on the bed. So swap over for the 9 mil drill now. So I'll show you the problem. There's the hole that we drilled, the fourth hole. And the bolt, as you can see, is going to foul on this rib. Um, what I'm going to do is use a little 8mm cutter and I'm going to scallop it a bit out of this support rib. I don't want to remove it altogether. I want to keep it there for strength. But I'm going to take a bit out or fettle a bit out with this cutter. And I'm also going to leave a nice flat surface under here. Um, the other side is the holes are drilled in the machine surface. I'll come through into the machine surface. But this side, it comes through on the rough casting. And... It would be nice if these bolts bottomed out on a on a flat surface at least. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way a bit because it's right in my uh, sort of where I need to be standing to machine it. And we're going to machine this out. So let's get in somewhere near. Um, I think we'll peck this out. Let me get to that back face first. Let's just lock the cutter. Get myself a a touch off on that back face I'm just uh, let me just come off just thinking to myself if I tighten that cutter up two seconds <laughs> I did okay so let's do that again now that we've uh, guaranteed it I'm going to have to come a bit deeper than that to okay that's so just touching there. So that's sort of touching in the corner. Let me set an X and Y zero in my DRO and come up. So I'm going to feed a cross in X by, let's go half mil steps, shall we? And a depth of about, I'd say, there will be enough right okay let's have another half probably gonna have to go about three mil in total I would have thought Just pecking down to a zero on my DRO. That's two mil. I can always take a little bit off the diameter of the head, but I'd rather keep it as a standard bolt. 
That's two and a half. And this is going to be three. I may have to go a little more. Let's take a look with a bolt. Oh, you know that. That is far away. I think I'm going to go another half mil. Set a zero where I am. And then I'm going to clean up the bottom face. So that'll be three and a half. Okay. I'll just lock the quill when I get to the bottom position. Go a little bit deeper. Let's just come back across that face. I forgot to set a zero. Okay, so let's come back, say, 0.2 maybe. I didn't set a zero, but I'll come back into my three and a half. It. Needs a little bit more to clean up the face. Do another point two. Okay. So let's have a quick squint at that, see how that works. Still got the clearance in there. I think I may just take this radius out and bring it true. So I'm going to go back into depth. Come to three and a half. Let's just lock X and wind the cutter out through here. I think I can come off that now. There we are. So that's that done. I'll just bring the table across. And I'm just going to take a scratch pass across where this bolt goes through. Let's go from that position there. Try that for depth. Quite cleaned up. Give it another point two. That's better. That's a, a far better surface for the bolt to sit flat and when it's tightened up it's not going to move and bias anything so yeah happy with that um, so yeah that problem was quite easy to solve and we still got lots of the reinforcement on the end um, yeah you can see it's just in picture so yeah that's that bit done um, finish with the bed get on and drill the hole in the headstock
25 mil deep with a drill. Six point eight tapping drill for M8. Okay, let me just double check that. So my bolt length is twenty-five. The thickness of the bed is ten. That allows me as long as my tap is close to that. I'll go a couple more mil. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight mil maybe. Just so that the bolt doesn't bottom out on the thread. 28. Okay. Um, I did have a squint round this side just to make sure it wasn't going to cause any problems. And there's miles of room there. So I started the tap off by holding it in the collet on the same centre as I drilled it. Just put it in a few turns. We've had the taper tap all the way in, gave it a vacuum out, so we'll go in now with the uh, bottom in tap or plug tap, I can feel that getting towards bottom now, just starting to bind, that's that, now I'll probably while I've got it here in a good handy spot, just run the tap down the other three holes as well just so I know where we are with those let's just have a tap wrench off yep that's it little deburr on that top surface now run the tap wrench down all four holes well, not the tap wrench <laughs> the tap just to make sure there's no muck and debris in there because who knows who tapped it when it was tapped, what Chinese tap was used? Yeah. And they can be tapped quite a bit deeper than they are now. I think I've, I know I've tapped deep enough based on uh, what that, the depth of last tap went in or the one I've just fitted. And these are going shallower, but they didn't seem to bottom out, but I've actually tapped them out now a little deeper. So I'll do all four and bring you back. So I'm just giving it a little stone off and cleaned up any lumps and bumps. Uh, I seem to recall it goes about there. Let's just put one of the original bolts back in, get it lined up. About there, that seems about the middle of that hole. There's nine mil holes with an eight mil bolt as we know. So that one screws in there. How did we do? Yep. Will it go all the way in? Yep. I think we'll call that a success. So I spent a bit of time uh, running over the bed with a flat stone, uh, precision flat stone, um, taking any dinks and lumps and bumps and bits of damage that have been caused over the number of years. There's a little dink there which is a hollow. There's another couple here. Uh, all on this front edge mostly, there was a couple of dinks here um, and there was a little dink on the back there but we've removed all of those and obviously I've already did this end um, after we drilled this hole now I said I wasn't going to <laughs> yeah famous last words, I couldn't help myself uh, out of curiosity I just run a stone over all these edges in here over the B and this flat face which is the only ones in contact uh, run a stone over them put it on the bed. I put a bit of uh, black marker pen. I have got marking blue, but I put a bit of black marker pen on just to see if there were any high spots. And there were. The centre of this area, this black face here, was shined right off and there was black ink everywhere else. And this face here showed evidence that the bed was tipped up, probably sitting on this high point. So if you can imagine, let me just carefully put that on there. It was showing evidence of this sort of uh, setup. So having, all right, I haven't got a power scraper or a scraper or anything like that. So what I did was using a, a fresh Stanley blade, um, basically scraped away the bulge in a series of goes, diagonal scrapes, and again on this way, 
with the end of a razor blade and it will scratch this cast iron away in only in little tiniest little slivers um, put the stone over it again blacked it back up put it back on and I kept doing that until basically the high point in the middle had gone away and what I found is automatically then that the two of these spaces came back into contact um, it was sort of top face of the one and bottom face of the other that were touching where it was obviously tipped up in this plane but now that I've done that um, it actually slides really nice um, obviously I don't want to do this too much it's all dry but yeah it's uh, it's a lot better and I'm getting a a lot better contact on the V which is the important bit and down on this space and wherever I put it I'm not getting any rock or movement at all so it's a little bit out of sequence because I want to stiffen this bed up um, that's another phase but I'm waiting on materials but I thought in the meantime I'm gonna make and I did show in a previous episode I think it was the first episode um, this great big chunk of 20 mil square or th three quarter square brass um, I did want bronze as I said originally and we're going to make the underneath keeps and we're going to make them to a far better tolerance than the original ones which were just metal plates jacked off on grub screws to get the thickness right and clamped up with three bolts so I'm sure this is going to be far better making a solid piece with the correct step we won't need any shims anything like that now, a few people have made suggestions. Uh, one guy had a small piece of brass and super glued it to the underside of the rail and uh, dressed that accordingly. Um, another fella, in fact, only messaged me this morning um, showing that he'd put, um, you know, the grub screws with the ball ends in for it to run on. Uh, I don't, don't want to do that because that basically gives a single point of contact with the end of the balls on the underside and that'll soon wear and uh, yeah you'll end up with a group anyway I don't want to do that so I'm going to go for the largest contact area I can by using a brass keep plate front and rear I think I got plenty of room to put a, a chunky one on the back it might have to be a bit more delicate on the front here because of the um, the the carriage and what have you going on the front or the saddle I should say um, so yeah, um, let's get on and make these keep plates. So I'm going to do the rear one first. I know the top of the bed is clean and it's fairly clean across here, but the underside is still fairly grubby. So uh, scotch bright time again on the underside of this and I think we'll make it uh, at various points along its length just to see if there's any variation in thickness. Because um, if I make a finite size with the clamp piece, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, with the, the slightest of clearance to allow it to run and it's three thou thicker here than here then obviously I'm wasting my time so we shall do that investigation first give it all a clean up give it a mic so I just put the mic along several places along the bed um, we started off at this end 9.126 millimeters uh, 0 0.129 0 0.135 36 36 35 36 then we dropped down to 124 9.124 one two three one one three here and then back to one three seven so there's a bit of wear in this area here which you'd expect I suppose it's the most commonly used bit but minimum reading one point uh, nine point one one three to one three six so uh, what have we got 23 microns uh, yeah uh, not a great issue um, you know, I'm going to be looking at a greater clearance than that with the brass anyway. So I'm not worried. I know uh, to all intents and purposes for what did it, this is. Um, it's parallel. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I could start fettling it, um, dropping everything down on the bottom here or even put it up and remachine this face parallel, this under face. But we're not going there. 100 mil long piece of brass, cutting this off a little bit longer, there's going to be two of these. There we go, two chunks of brass. <laughs> I'm just trying to do a little drawing and height here, i got all the room in the world so I'll just clean up on my material. Um, the width there, but a bit that sits on there is 11.68, 11.7, call it 11.7. So my overall width of my part needs to be 11.7 
plus whatever step I've got under the bed and um, we'll take you know roughly a mil off so if I go to the bed I can probably can I can I you can see the bed there in short yes let's uh, let's zoom in on that a bit okay so um, distance here so it's 11.7 plus 7.2, 19.9, oh, um, so if I go 19 by 19 with that block, that'll probably do it, so 19 by 19, oh, it's 19 now, <laughs> okay, um, right, light is to scratch cuts to square this up, I think, on all four sides, I think that'll be what we do with it, and then we'll flash the ends to, um, to size. So all four sides done on two. I'm just squaring one end up. Changed over to an end mill now. As you recall, I only hacksawed these off. And I left them a few mil long. A bit more. A oh, bit of a groove in there. Grass is lovely to machine. Oh, scratch more. Yeah, I basically scribed the line on with the calipers at 100 mil, and then went a couple of mil outside with a hacksaw and hacksaw them off. Uh, so that's that one done. Uh, let's just swap to the other one and do that. Uh, as you can see, on the last setup, I haven't moved it since the last setup, the part in the what's it, but I made sure the parallel was back so that, and the job was overhanging. Um, and that allowed me to machine that end, as you can see. So, just pop the other one up now, all nice and clean, make sure there's no dirt in the vice, hang that out the end. Okay. Clamp that down, give it a... Can't quite get that. There we go. So, do the next one now. Let's just come off a bit. So as you can see, I've got an end stop here. I set the end stop up in a roughly the right place, loosened the vise, moved it across. This is the machine end. And just slid it back against the end stop, tighten up the vise and give it a gentle tap down. So now I'm going to do the other end and I'm going to get a measurement. We're going to make it 100 mil long. Um, yeah, using the DRO, I'll basically take a cut till it cleans up, measure it with a mic, see where we are now, and then obviously set the DRO to zero and take off whatever's appropriate. When I come to do the next one, I can just slide it in against the stop and do it to the same reading on the DRO. So yeah, a bit of time saving, that's all that is. So I need to swap to a drill chuck. Um, I didn't show, but I had my fly cutter up, which is on a 12 mil shank. So I basically just drop that out and without even having to change the collet, whack the 12 mil cutter in. And now I'm gonna to change to a drill chuck and I've got a 12 mil shank on that as well. So yeah, I mean, it. it <laughs> I try and keep 12 mil is my preferred shank size when I'm using the collets. Um, obviously, if I'm using a different size cutter or what have you, I have to change collets. But, uh, you know, for my general sort of use, um, try and stick to uh, 12 mil. So I've been putting a clock up or something like that in there. I try and use a, a 12 mil shank all the time. And then, obviously, if I do want to change the collet, it doesn't take seconds. But, uh, yeah, just in the interest of efficiency, I try and keep all my bits and bobs for general use all at 12 mil and it saves changing that collet all the time so that said I've just done a quick measure um, the holes center wise obviously it's 100 mil long it's 50 to the center one and then it's 40 40 either side and I just measured even though this is under 12 mil here it's 6.5 from this outer edge which was my reference so um, I need to write that down while I think of it 
so I'm going to write it on here 6.5 40 40 so that's for this particular one I haven't looked at that it looks the same as far as centers yeah 40 80 and we're all about center at 50 so yeah that's the figures I'm going off so I need to come off one edge 6.5 in and drill these three holes okay and then back the other way I can wind it with a use my feed send me reaching around the camera 40 the other way and that'll be the three holes Okay, let's just bring up the 40. I'm going to check my sizes for the other one and see if I can swap them over and do the same thing. Uh, just drilling the three holes now. 40 mil centers in, in the low center drills, basically same day terms. Um, I've decided I am going to put the counter sinks in at the same time. So I'm going to swap over to the counter sink shortly. So counter sink in bit now, uh, 6 mil deep. Just using the fine feed on my quill for this. Stop it snatching. And go into a 6 mil depth. I was just about to do the counter sinks in this one for this part but it turns out that this brass piece has to be much thinner than the one on this side reason being the hand wheel or I should say the um, the pinion that runs on the rack on the carriage and I haven't cleaned any of this up yet as you can see there's a finite gap under there so 20 mil is not going to sit on there is it so uh, if I counter sunk then chances are I'd have to machine it all off again so uh, yeah we won't do that at this stage um, I've got the holes in position that's let me just put that over there that's all I need for now uh, yeah though that's why I'm not doing the other three well job's not done till the deburring's done so we'll have a little little chamfer on these three as you can see I'll do all three so I did a bit of measuring and I reckon the step is going to be greater than 0.8 so I'm going to put 0.8 on here which is actually there a 0.8 step I'm going to leave the 0.8 step go back a little bit further than it needs to I don't want the corner for corner so I need this high point to measure less than 11.7 so I'm going to aim for 11.5 and we're going to try this at point 8 we can always take a bit more off I've done a bit more feckling with the saddle itself uh, making sure everything was flat and straight and what have you and basically let me just show you this so I'll uh, just switch this off a second Basically what I did was I bolted the other one on there and I measured the gap underneath with my slip gauges. Here we are. Uh, I had some slip gauges underneath and measured what the gap is now. And obviously because I miked the bed earlier on, I know what the maximum or minimum that gap's got to be. So that's where I was going with that. Um, and it's going to be something like, what was it, 8.4? Yeah, 0.8. Um, I'm going to try it with 0.8. Um, I, I believe it's going to bind. And I'm just going to take a thou at a time until it doesn't. Um, so that shoulder, I just did an eyeball. That distance needs to be less than 11.7. And it is 12.2 at the moment. So I need to step over 0.5 in Y. I'll just do that. Let's do a 0.3 and a 0.2, shall we? 
There's the point three. Well, it was very, very close. Um, I did have to take another point one off, and it got to the point where it fits and it will slide along the entirety of the bed. But in the areas where the bed is slightly thicker, it's just that little bit too stiff. So I think if I just take a small oil stone, that's a medium, and just polish the peaks off that a little. Just to increase that step. I've got a fine one here. So I persevered with this. Um, every time I got to a point and it was binding in one place and not in another, the variation in thickness of this lip, I basically, I'll show you what I did. I came in, oh, let me just put it down there without dropping it on anything. I came in with this great big file, and you can see the witness mark, and I basically went in there with the file square and took off any high points along that length it's still a little tight on the very end but I'm not worried about that the carriage will never go down there so basically it was running nicely in this area uh, here and it was a bit tight here which is again where the thickness showed and then it went very tight at the end so as you can see it now runs nicely um, if I in fact I know I can you could hear it a minute ago <laughs> you can't hear it now but yeah there is you know point zero zero one movement maybe in there so yeah I'm, I'm gonna leave it like it is do the other side we may have to readdress this when we do the other side we shall see um, but yeah, I think as it stands at the moment, there's enough gap for an oil film to get into. Um, so I'm going to leave it well alone. I think uh, we're going to call it on that. So with that done, I think we'll bring this video to a close now. Um, anyway, as per usual, guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.